Most of the time, we are going to be working with equilibrium constants in terms of concentration. All right, so before we start calculating those fun uh, constants and using them to calculate maybe equilibrium concentrations, uh, we also have to talk about what uh, we do with heterogeneous equilibria. All right, so heterogeneous equilibria, we're going to use that term uh, the same way we talked about it in terms of catalysis. So what was, that, what was, it, what was going on if we had a heterogeneous catalyst or heterogeneous catalysis? So yeah, we talked about a solid, but what was the difference? What was different? Phases, phases, there are different phases, okay? Uh, so when you have heterogeneous equilibria, you have different phases. So for instance, this first one, carbon uh, monoxide in equilibrium with CO2 and carbon solids. So we got some gases and some solids, okay? And then the uh, one below, we got gases, liquids, aqueous ions. So heterogeneous equilibrium is that you have uh, reactants and molecules in different phases. And reactants and products in different phases. Okay. And it turns out uh, we need to be uh, careful when we uh, approach an equilibrium system uh, that is uh, heterogeneous because there's going to be two scenarios where we're going to have zero order reactants. What was a zero order reactant? N equals zero, the line would be flat when we plot it rate as a function of concentration. So what did that mean? It didn't affect rate. The, the reactants didn't, the concentration of the reactants didn't affect the rate. Okay, and if equilibrium's all about the rate, rate of forward reaction equals rate of the reverse, a zero order of reactants not going to impact our equilibrium constant. So guess what? It's not in the expression. Okay, and so the two examples that we talked about, and we'll see them here, are one when we have solid molecules. Okay. They aren't doing the colliding, basically. All the collisions are based off the CO2. So adding or removing carbon is not going to impact the rate of the reverse reaction. And so guess what? When we write it, our K sub C, it would just be the concentration of CO2 all over CO squared. So we don't include solids in equilibrium constants. So in this one, the reactance is greater? Well, we don't know. You'd have to know what K is to really talk about which one's bigger. This could be, uh, K could ever be really big, products greater than, or it could be really small, reactants. We just don't know about that. The only thing we, uh, we're trying to get away from this is that we don't include solids. Okay. All right, and then the other zero order reactant uh, that we'll come across is when liquid is a reactant in an aqueous phase. Because you'll remember, okay, so we got an aqueous reaction system, uh, water, turns out there's already a lot of water in water. And I, like, I like saying that, like there's a lot of water in water. Um, and so it's not going to impact the uh, rate, not going to impact our equilibrium system. So whenever you see water in the liquid phase, just the liquid phase, if it's in the gas phase, that's going to matter. So liquid water we don't include either. And so this equilibrium constant would be the concentration of H plus times hydrogen carbonate all over CO2. So 
So we're not going to include liquid water either. So no liquids, no solids? Not no liquids, not liquids. If it's another molecule, that's okay. Is that, that could impact. Just liquid water and aqueous solutions. So just water. Any solids, no, they're not going to work. Okay, so any solids or just water in the liquid phase. All right, um, so let's start uh, maybe uh, doing some calculations. Huh? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Wait, hmm? we don't include them because they don't affect the rate? Exactly. They're not going to affect the rate, so they're not going to affect equilibrium. Equilibrium is all about the rates. All right.